Yeah, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Yesterday, I released part one of the summit meeting held between wargaming staff, including their devs, and some of the official CCs and content creators. This is part two. Now, apologies again, it's quite a long video, but hopefully, you will find some of what was discussed interesting. So, let's get into it and uh, proceed to the next question. So, Drudels, let's go with you. All right, so this is um, a two-part thing. One's kind of something that I've noticed in game statistics that's incorrect, and then the other is something that could be added. So the first has to do with camouflage ratings in Blitz. So me and a friend noticed that Blitzhanger, which is a website that grabs statistics from World of Tanks Blitz and throws them on a website, had different values stated for uh, tanks like the Grill 15 on camouflage and the Waffenfeger Panzer IV than in game. So we proceeded to go into a training room and test the actual spotting range. And in game, it says the Grill actually have a, has a better camo rating than the Waffenfeger, which just is not correct. The, the Waffle's sitting at like 30%, and the Grill's at like 16%. So somewhere in the game statistics, camouflage values are very off from what they actually are in uh, reality. And then the second part was just, um, is it possible to add on movement dispersion values into the uh, in-game interface? Okay, so... Oh, so first, maybe, maybe I, will, okay. I will try okay, we'll to answer the question. First part, uh, I think it uh, could be a bug uh, and we should look uh, through it. Maybe you will send it... Uh, for us, for example, and we will look at it, of course, uh, and we'll try to fix it. As far as I know, right now we have a, a bug um, about um, about badger camouflage. It also shows some some different value from what it should be. As far as I remember, and right now we are going to fix it. Uh, if you send us this information about this a bit more, we will uh, fix uh, this case also. And um, I don't really uh, understand the second part of the question. Could you repeat it, please? Yeah. Um, so, like, you can look on websites and see the, um, like, on movement dispersion values, like, when you're moving the tank, how much the ah. aiming time is going to bloom. Uh, is it possible mm. to add it into the in-game interface so people can see how it affects the tank? Uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely possible, but it's, um, mm, mm, I would say that this feature just don't have to be priority for us right now because it's too, uh, frankly speaking, it's too skillful. You know, it's uh, yeah. really meaning something for you, for good players. But for vast majority of our players, I would say for maybe even 99, 96, 95% of players, it's uh, this information doesn't mean anything at all. So that's the real reason why okay. don't we do this right now. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Drudels. Uh, Jack, are you ready to ask your question? Um, hello again. Um, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit worried if this is a bit inaccurate, but I'll try to um, ex uh, trying to um, have this a uh, bit more appropriate. Uh, but I, I heard a few people uh, from the Asia server, and uh, as of a few weeks ago. Um, they're still looking for, um, they're, st they're still thinking whether Wargaming will consider including non-Japanese Asia top clans for clans, uh, clan tester program in the future. Will Wargaming consider including these clans for the clan tester program in the future? I'm talking about non-Japanese Asia top clans. Thank you, Jack. Uh, so, Jack, first of all, I would like to correct you a little bit. Uh, all the guys that take part in any tests on uh, Asian server, they are no regular players. They're just uh, community contributors, just like you or our moderators. So there are no clans at all. So we don't have a clan test program on uh, Asian server. Uh, so the reason we don't have it is because um, every time we add a new clan to that program, uh, requires a lot of efforts, time, resources for us to run it, to analyze stats, and so on and so forth. And to be honest, at the moment, we have, uh, uh, we have enough uh, participants, enough data 
to to operate from other servers. So um, if we do that, it will be only only because you guys want it, not because we need it. And we have to uh, kind of balance those things, our efforts and the outcome we get. So uh, I wouldn't exclude the possibility of uh, bringing uh, CTP client test program to Azure server, but in the nearest future for maybe six months, uh, at the moment we are not ready for that because of uh, prioritization. Yeah. So thank you, Rebel Stripe, for the answer. Let's proceed, every. Um, so I had a question that would be regarding to the uh, game mode of ratings. Ratings. Because okay. um, I know a couple of us here also have similar questions that regard to that. Um, so I'm going to cut it a bit short. The main topic is currently for the rating battles. Um, it is designed, or the idea behind it is that it is skill based. Right. that um, you have to be really good to be really high. Unfortunately, right now, that is not the case. All you need to do is to play a lot of games. And then even a uh, player that is not as good as others um, can really reach those 5,000, 6,000 points, which I've um, some others have reached, um, and even those who maybe shouldn't be there specifically. So is there a way to maybe limit the amount of battles that would give points to a player? on maybe a daily basis, because some people sit there, I think someone wrote it in a question for seven hours to just play rating. How was um, it? Yes. And it's just, they just farm points without needing to be good by letting their team win for them. And it doesn't really involve the skill of oneself if you just waste your time and have others do the job for you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing from uh, the comments in our chat. Uh, Anna says it's me. <laughs> Yeah, I would like I would like to um, interrupt a little bit. So you said uh, it's not about skill. It's not about uh, how good you are uh, when playing ratings. So you just need to farm your battles and your ratings will go up even up to uh, 5K, right? Well, I mean, of course, skill needs some part of it. I won't say that it's not necessary, but you don't need to be an absolutely excellent player to get up there. Well, you know what? Uh, I, I don't want to start naming and shaming, but Shortik <laughs> has played, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, about, yes, 900 battles for this season. And she didn't reach uh, 5K. So well, it looks, mean, like, it looks like uh, so the time you can spend is not enough for going is, that high. That might also be a difference of service. Because, for example, um, the same thing for in me, the two-month seasons... You. I know someone got to 7,000 points uh, when the Fearless got first introduced, the EI6, and they played 3,000 battles of rating to get there. Oh, well, maybe that's because uh, uh, the higher you are, the more battles you need to proceed even higher. Sure, obviously, but I think it's at that stage, it's just you don't need to be as good to get there. Okay, it's just so about how much time do you have on your hand. Let's uh, finally answer your question about rating battles. Uh, Alexander raised his hand. Uh, actually, uh, yes, I have. I have one um, answer. Um, the difference between you and, for example, Anna is um, that uh, you play. You, you are playing on different region with different audience in rating battles, and as um, as bigger audience. Then uh, for, for bigger audience in rating battle, this uh, idea to play more and you you will go more isn't uh, um, doesn't work. Uh, okay, in, in Russian, uh, in Russian and English, I cannot. <laughs> um, okay. um, rating перестает нормально работать как skillful rating, если аудитория рейтинговых боев небольшая. Чем она меньше, тем хуже работает skillful rating, и тем лучше работает, и тем больше он напоминает долгий квест. Let me translate. So what uh, Alexander said is that the smaller amount of players in rating is, the less it is actually based on skill. That's, that's his point. So uh, the thing you suggest, if we further like 
make the amount of battles make it smaller. It will affect the amount of players that will get there in a bad way. So the whole full scope of such players will become even smaller, meaning this will be even less skill based than it is now. No. So the only way here is to throw more players' ratings at this point. Um, there might be, because uh, I thought of this before as well, an idea to maybe fix it in a way is because currently rating works by averaging out the um, rating that you're currently on between seven of you and then puts it at um, a somewhat similar um, rating as um, the enemy team does. Um, but I think maybe changing it to be an area of points would be better. For example, uh, you can have in one team a team of 4,000 average rating points and similarly in the enemy team, but the individual difference can be massive. You can have 2,000 rating point people in there that theoretically shouldn't even be playing um, within the same group as those people so that you maybe make it a range of points. For example, you play between 4,000 and 4,200, those people play against each other. That would um, make the issue of spamming battles uh, a lot more. It would lower it, and it would also make the skill, uh, the need for skill a lot more important. And that will make you yeah. uh, to wait for hours in the queue. Yeah. And yes. Vladimir will go on with uh, his future. Uh, yeah, um, I will try to ask you to answer you. Uh, Sasha was right. And the other reason, like Alexandra said, that uh, from the very beginning, uh, we tried this system when the range of ratings uh, between the lower rating player and the higher rating player in the, in the teams uh, was much lower. Uh, we start from difference, like uh, I don't remember, maybe 500 and so. Uh, but the problem is that uh, the audience uh, of our rating battles is not enough. The quantity of players is very few. And uh, we can't do anything at all with this, unfortunately, uh, except of uh, giving some crazy, crazy gifts and to attract uh, new players with this, uh, uh, I don't know, in-game currency or new tanks and so on and so forth. But uh, it will be just an inflation of the resources and no more than this. Rating system is a system which uh, you... You should want to play in this. Not uh, we, we don't need to like force you to play uh, in this uh, game mode. And the reality is that our game uh, begins uh, from begins with random battles. Uh, other games, uh, especially different competitive games, they first have rating battles always, and the second uh, they have like uh, random battles or something like this. Uh, but we have a uh, different way, uh, so that's why I think it's will be it will be really hard to, frankly speaking, it will be really hard to do something with this. Uh, of course, uh, right now we are. Uh, doing uh, some features connected with rating battles. Uh, I hope that in a couple of new versions, our, our, release, our releases, you will see these features. But I don't, um, I, I can't say that it will uh, change the situation dramatically. Maybe somehow force new players to start playing and to get this amount of rating battle players bigger and to help the system works uh, correct. So um, uh, I would say that if right now the a lot of players start playing uh, rating battles, the uh, system will start um, uh, generating a, a very, let's say, very fair battles with fair ratings, with uh, low range, but uh, the system works like this. Um, it tries to create battle with fair rating. Uh, I mean, not fair, but I mean, with a low range dispersion of the rating. And if it can't, it uh, starts generating matches with bigger dispersion and so on and so forth. And if uh, there is very few players, it uh, generates or creates matches with big dispersions. So. Unfortunately, that's our realities, and it's really hard to change it somehow. But we are trying. Thank you, Drudel. Yeah. So very fast oh. question. 
Yeah, um, this would just be my solution to ratings because when the IS6 Fearless came out, I played probably 40, 50 hours on live streams trying to get the tank, and it was it was painful. But I would say the the biggest two issues I had with ratings was queue times and the amount of overperforming premiums that were spammed because ratings is supposed to be a testament of skill. And I'm playing down at tier eight in vehicles like the Defender Mark One, Progetto 46, vehicles that are stronger than a lot of tech tree vehicles. And because of that, I'm able to make a greater advantage over other players. So uh, personally, I thought to make the queues faster and to make rating more based on skill would be make it only tech tree available tanks and make it so that it's only one specific tier. So maybe tier 10, like PC has there. A frontline or whatever the game mode is where you have to play all the same tier and i think that might be a better way to make the queue shorter for all one tier and at the same time keep it so that it's uh not spamming of overpowered tanks uh yeah let me answer so uh it's definitely a mistake that um exclusion of uh, premium tanks will um make a queue uh better i would say that will uh, will make the matchmaker work better uh because really a lot of players uh would stop playing rating battles if they uh won't be able to play it with their favorite tanks uh maybe with uh, a bit op tanks <laughs> let's say so yeah uh that's true uh, and um the second part of your, of your proposal about uh, tier 10 rating battles, uh, we started uh, this rating system from tier 9 and 10 uh, first year. And then uh, maybe not a year, maybe in a half of the year, I don't remember quite well. We add uh, seven uh, and seventh and eighth grades and the audience becomes bigger. So I think that if we will cut it, it won't help. Um, because we had this experience and we see that adding new levels just make the uh, players, uh, the amount of players wider. So I think the reverse of this stuff won't help us, unfortunately. Thank you. So, um, yep. Yes, guys, okay. I'm sorry, but we need to close the topic with rating battles. Uh, I need to go further because we have only one hour and 10 minutes left. So let's uh, answer one more question and then have a small break. So, Fatness. Hello Although it's, uh, it's your choice. You can ask a question okay. about but, but, but not about rating battles. <laughs> yes, no, don't worry. I, I will not bother you guys with more ratings talk. Um, this one's actually going to be more about map-based, map just for a couple select maps that I have in mind. So it's a two-part question. Um, the first one's going to be very simple. On Castilla, on the north spawn, on top of the main Castilla hill, there is a truck there. And when you try to shoot through that truck into an opponent tank, it eats the shell. It's a ghost truck. There's a ghost hitbox there. You destroy the truck. It's smoldering rebels there. You shoot through it at an enemy tank that is perfectly visible. It eats the shell. It's right on top of the Castilla Hill. It's been here for several years and nothing's been done about it. Well, not several, a few years. So it's a glitch in the map and it's in an extremely crucial hot on position and it limits your ability to perform in that position because it's, it's a ghost hitbox. So... I was hoping Wargaming could do something about this because it's been mentioned quite a few times previously, except nothing has ever changed about that truck, the dispose the destructible object which you are able to shoot through. So uh, unfortunately, our uh, map design lead is ill now, but if you can uh, have some replay about this situation, about this mm -hmm. truck, you can send it for Rebel Stripe or for Tony, and we'll go to Mikhail, our map uh, design lead, and I hope we try to fix it for sure. Yeah, okay. just Perfect. To, uh, to, to make it uh, um, short about all the situation with bugs on the map. So our um, level designer, Michael, has very open and he's always on player side. So if you face any issues on the maps, okay. uh, do not hesitate. Because yeah, you know, we, we always have uh, this 
strange situation when lots of influencers said, oh, guys, we had lots of bugs on your maps. So can you help me uh, us? Can you send a replay to customer service? Can you uh, send some screenshot? Oh, sorry, I'm lazy today. Maybe next time. And after that again, oh, you have lots of bugs on your maps. <laughs> yeah, sad but okay. true. So yeah, so help I'll try us and, rec- and we'll help yeah. you. I'll try and recreate the situation in a training room and I'll send the re- replay to Ribble or Thank Tony. You. I think that we have a question from Mitzi. Who will ask this question? As a man? Yeah, I can ask again. Um, Mitzi asked many times if there is any way to, to make the uh, community contributors more present to the people. So perhaps if you look at the big world of tanks, there are in the game or sort of it, I've thought it would be a good idea. He said if there are YouTube links or somewhere findable or anything like that. Yeah. Okay, the question is well taken. So Tony will answer. Yeah, and yeah, I think Roman may add something. Uh, so I think uh, in some way we can put that we're already on the way to it. Uh, I mean, our like recent activities like catch content creator, community contributor, or like defeat your CC or whatever. Uh, so uh, I mean it because uh, we had uh, all the links listed in the in-game news, both on website and in-game clients to your channels. Uh, I know that's not fully what Metsy meant, but I think it's like partially covers it. Mm-hmm. And we're also open to any new ideas that you guys might have. And I believe that uh, this should be like a two-side uh, collaboration. Uh, when we provide you with like new tools and uh, new opportunities and give you more visibility, and that helps you like your, and that makes your like community contrib- contributor or content creator life easier and allows you to provide like more types of content, like more, more various content. So yeah, my main point is that uh, we're open to it and we can discuss it. So whatever you want, guys, I'm always open for discussion. And we have two questions, I think. Yeah, quick spoiler for you guys. Now we are working with special player profile for community contributor. And I think it will be interesting for you too. Yeah, I wish we could show it right now, but it's it's still being designed. Uh, no, no, so, it's yeah, in later. design. Yeah. Oh, and uh, shall we give the spoiler? I think it's high time. I think the question is like uh, very. Uh, Roman. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are working with Alexandra and Tony. Uh, in, uh, so we're designing uh, the uh, like uh, battle of bloggers event. So there's no details, but I think uh, we will uh, launch it and then we try more and more and better and better next time. Uh, so I can can give you some details, but uh, the bloggers will in, involve uh, very closely. So uh, yeah, well, stay, 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 stay that tuned. Will be yes. the main part of it. So that's yeah. that's the main point. So, so yeah, in yeah. terms of giving you visibility, it will be a, like a huge push. Yeah, this is the main idea actually. Yeah. So a very fast question. Uh, wasn't actually a question, but more of a suggestion to the okay. current topic of um, trying to expose the CCs more. Um, in game, we have sort of like a drop down um, where we can get linked to the forum to the Blitz portal and also to the official YouTube channel. Maybe just adding a section there itself, which maybe then extends to show all the different uh, contributors could be a possibility to include them in the game more. I think it's regarding interface. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, who can cover it? Also interface is also about uh, Roman or Alexander, if you want, please. Um, yeah, I understood that you talk about sidebar and the left menu. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, it's a lawyer question. Can we add a link to your portal there for uh, not in temporary, not temporary, on permanent yeah. uh, base? Because if we put a link there, so all content on your pages, all content on your channel should adopt uh, to uh, 
rating, uh, uh, age yeah, you know, rating, and other and other and other things. And uh, it's uh, could be a very difficult lawyer question. Yeah, if if you add uh, links for, for your channel in our game plan, it will, for our players it will be like our official uh, channel of communication. And if you will use I don't know some root words or smoking or something like that on your live streams, I don't know. It's just example. It will be really huge problem for us because it's re it's quite it's a really part of fashion in, in lawyer sphere not I just a uh, community contributor sphere. I think we can use some interim solution here. So not just uh, put your links in the game due to some restrictions that the guys mentioned, but we can have like some uh, thematical news, like introducing, introducing our community contributors and content creators, like bound to some topic or some occasion or some festival or whatever. So that's easier option. It has like much less drawbacks. So yeah, it's an option. Yeah. So Drudel's first question. Yeah, that'd be suggestion. Like. So um, with Meadsy's question about uh, CCs and getting privileges over normal content on the game, uh, one of the big things I've always uh, asked Darth about is onto the question of would it be possible for um, content creators to get test tanks and voice their opinions on the current state of the vehicle before it's released into the game, because that would bring more publicity to the tanks. I mean, obviously I'm already like, um, websites get the stats and I'll talk about it anyway, but it'd be much nicer if we're actually able to play them and voice formal opinions on how the tanks perform. Mm -hmm. And then when they're released, people know how they're going to play instead of just the LT432 coming in the shop and bam, I've got to make a video as soon as it comes out. Okay, I think that uh, Rebel or even Insider can... Yeah, I think it's more about open tests, so mm -hmm. probably Insider yeah, can I, help I, us Yeah, I can this. start. So uh, the reason we cannot uh, give you uh, an access to uh, such uh, an exclusive content like tanks that are tested right now, uh, it's just because you guys are opinion makers. So when you see a tank uh, in its taste stage, uh, in test stage, so you can form your opinion, you can uh, pass it to your viewers, and there might be a problem uh, because when we have to adjust the tank, nerf it, of course, uh, after the tests, um, the people might get disappointed. Like, uh, what the hell? We were expecting a tank like this, and we're receiving a tank like that. So we're gaming, what the hell are you doing? You are lying to us, you are not fair, so on and so forth. And this is why every time we highlight any tanks that is tested right now, we mention that it's on test, we might adjust it. Uh, so don't, uh, don't create any expectations until it's released. So this is why, this is where all that security, no comments about the tank's performance come from when you test it. Okay, uh, do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Insider, please uh, try to be short. Yeah, that was a great answer from Ribble. So I just, I'll be just saying that uh, when we just uh, create a tank and put it to the test on the production live servers, yeah. So we are often experimenting. So we might make it a little OP or even maybe really OP, but Th that's the test and that's we are pushing uh, the parameters to their limits and we see how they work in real life and then we adjust those parameters because after we release the tank and make it available for everyone we just are not that free to do that especially if it, that's a premium vehicle or collector one so that's why uh, really it's uh, it would be a great issue with expectations from the tank well and that would limit us greatly in our experiments and the way how we test those tanks yeah would it would it be maybe possible just to like because i know tanks finish testing like i know the conf panzer 50 tons been done for like a month now is it maybe possible once the testing is over um that we could maybe get like the tank a week ahead 
and make a video on it so that people know what it's going to be like from the YouTuber's perspective before it's released on its final form? That's a question to Tony. Yeah, that's a yeah. question for me, correct. Uh, what you mentioned here is it's more about NDA stuff we discussed with you earlier. Uh, I can actually answer now, but it's more like uh, specific to you and me stuff because uh, some of guys here are like under NDA and they do get earlier access to those things like two or three days prior to their release. But uh, with those like additional options of being able to cover some like new tech first, comes additional, uh, let's say, responsibilities and limitations. So, uh, for example, uh, it's like not a bad thing, but I know that Udoodles uh, often create content based on data mining stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's like in that gray zone that we don't forbid, but we also don't very really like it, to be honest, to be frank. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if you want to join like our NDA part, uh, that there are some things that you will need to want the board to resign to like get rid of. So if you're like up to it, we can discuss it, but we probably won't waste time now. So it's like yeah. a more private discussion. Okay. That's an option, but yeah, it's like some shifts should be made like in terms of, uh, I mean, in, term, in types of your content as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you uh, to everyone, to the question and to the answers. Let's proceed. Uh, Frostbite, your question is very welcome. Uh, sure. Okay. So one of my next questions was going to be about ratings, but I think we've uh, beat that dead horse enough so I can move on. Um, let's see. I'm going to discuss one of the other things. So um, in the past, we've had some uh, unintended positions on maps. Uh, frequently known to players as, as like boost strategies or boost spots. Um, some of those, those boost spots uh, in the past were more accessible. Uh, we had obviously the most, probably the most famous moment was when uh, Messi had his girl 15 up there uh, on Fort Despair uh, during Twister. <laughs> that was a, a really cool moment. But uh, ever since that, uh, a lot of the, the boost spots have been removed from the game. Uh, currently, I only know... Uh, very few that can be performed in matches and only one that can be performed you know solo like by one player i'm not going to even mention what it is because i don't i don't want that blocked off um but just i wanted to ask you know is it possible uh <laughs> is it possible that in the future more of these like unattended positions might be accessible uh for, for players I like the moment uh, when uh, Reap uh, um, appeared <laughs> when we were talking about Twister and that moment with Grill. <laughs> Yeah. So, Ripple, could you help us with the question? Uh, yes. So that moment you mentioned when uh, Raid Guy uh, climbed onto that hill and just uh, turned that final round and Raid win the whole thing. Yes, it was an epic <laughs> showdown. It was something we uh, we were really amazed by that. All the studio, I was spectating that thing and Tony was. So, yes, it was epic and the memory for, for our life, for Bliss life. But uh, there is a other side of this, um, of this case. Uh, lots of people are trying to do that uh, in a normal battles, in uh, rating battles, and they just ruin the gameplay for another people who just want to play the normal game. Uh, they fight for win, and that's it. So uh, this is where we... Uh, have to find a solution that um, suits for majority of players. So, and we would rather uh, remove that option to 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 make such performance uh, possible in order to keep the gameplay the way it should be, because we don't want our players to uh, fool around on our maps during the normal matches. It's absolutely okay when you guys uh, prepare such tactics for. Um, um, for online championship or offline championship, no matter, uh, because it's your common decision. You all understand what you're doing. You understand what um, may go wrong and what the, the result will be. Uh, but in normal battles, it doesn't work. And this is why you have to focus our, um, our actions concerning uh, random battles. Can I, say something? Uh, can I add something? And uh, we don't want to add uh, the position um, 
uh, which cannot be con contrad, con contrasia in Russian, I don't know, in English. Uh, so something that can be protected can be protected yes so if somebody pick this position at the very beginning or uh, on the in any any time any part of the game it should be um, pro should be a, a way how to protect it and uh, because in other way it's like who who, who will be the first who who uh, pick this position who uh, enter this position so it's uh, and it's difficult to make it <laughs> it's uh, um, op opposites. So that's all. That's all. <laughs> it's okay. very fair. I, that's that's what I expected, um, and I, I totally understand the okay. point of views. So thank you, Frostbite, for your question. Uh, let's go with Fugit. Me. Me. Hello. <laughs> yeah, Dari. Uh, I I, I want to ask a really weird question. So at, at the moment, there's about. 259 premium collector tanks in the game, give or take a premium or collector tank. And a lot of players want to want those. And I know this is sort of counterintuitive as a YouTuber to, to ask this. These are great revenue sources and people want them, but would Wargaming ever consider a sort of, I don't know, a rental system or a try before you buy? to allow, not, not in normal game mode, so, uh, you know, you could spend a bit of gold or a bit of real life money to take a, a tank out that is either going to come in uh, as a premium tank for sale in a training room or something like that to see if it matches what your style of gameplay is before you, you outlay the cash to buy it outright. Okay, so the question oh. is understandable, and uh, Dmitry will uh, answer about rental um, tanks. So, let's go. Not a weird question. That's a question that we hear quite often, uh, and uh, uh, we also discussed it uh, from many, many times in our company, and uh, uh, we don't. Uh, have a, some common solution for that. Uh, the most uh, uh, general thing is that uh, uh, I lost my thought. What was it about? Uh, yeah, and that uh, different tanks uh, require different time to learn it, to, mm -hmm. to understand how to play it, and the, the first impression that you can uh, have uh, while playing tank uh, for uh, 5, 10, or even 50 battles can be wrong yeah. uh, and uh, can lead to uh, wrong decision, uh, wrong conclusion, and wrong opinion that someone can spread to the audience. And that is the main reason why we don't uh, do that. Uh, but still, we're thinking about it, and we don't uh, uh, exclude time Exclude. When, when we don't mm. exclude it uh, from the future. Yeah, I mean, one of the main reasons I ask is I, I get quite a lot of free-to-play players saying they'd love to be able to play these tanks, but because they're free-to-play, they're not prepared to outlay that, that amount of cash there and then. They, they'd like to get a feel of the tank first. And that, that's really what I'm sort of trying to look at because not every player in the game, and I'm not saying that it's majority, but there is a, there is a large proportion of the game that really is free to play. And they would probably be more willing to spend a few euros, dollars, rubles, like they do for the battle pass to, to, to play some of these tanks in real time. I mean, the battle pass is a great success because of the cost of the battle pass and for what it gives you. And it's not just about the tanks that come with the battle pass. It's all the added extras. So, you know, in some free to play players will, will drop that cash for the battle pass and they may be able to do the same thing or be more open to drop some small amount of cash to try out premium or collector tanks. 
before they consider the initial outlay. That, that's the sort of angle I'm, I'm coming at from some of the questions I get asked to me as a CC from some of the, from some of the, uh, the people. Uh, very important uh, question. Uh, CC as a c- content creator or community contributor? A uh, community contributor. Sorry, that one. Yeah, that, that one. Yeah. <laughs> we need to come up with new wording. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, Tony, uh, that's your job. <laughs> Dimitri, do you have uh, anything to yeah, add? That's a controversial question. Will they? Uh, uh, will it have positive effect for us? Will the players? Uh, become uh, more yeah, open m- more open and uh, like well, the players will want to buy the thing or not so that's a question mm-hmm. so mm, you said uh, that uh, 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 the battle pass was a big uh, big push for it f- to, to let the uh, uh, Free to play gamers uh, uh, have some tanks uh, for a really small amount of money, and we uh, continue uh, developing and uh, continue uh, improving this feature. But still, speaking about the uh, rental tanks, I'm not sure that uh, it will be in the next future. Yes, yeah, so, uh, fair enough, right? And uh, should I mention that for free to play uh, players, we have a lot of events, a lot of activities where you can receive free staff resources and even free premium or collector tanks. So uh, we do our best to give some variety and give a lot of opportunities for free to play players. So I think they, they should not be offended because we really give a lot of stuff. So thank you, uh, Fugit, for your question. Rip, are you ready to? Ask your question or you are busy a little bit. No, no, I'm here. Um, I have a lot of questions. I don't know uh, where to start. Um, let's talk. I mean, it's it's uh, something that I think a lot of people are complaining about it. It's about balancing a special on a level seven. Because I think I know that it's hard to balance a game because there are some tanks that are stronger and other they are harder to drive, but they are... Uh, two tanks like called smasher and later mm-hmm. is planned in future to balance there something i mean that's we could say right now yeah it's funny and hard to play versus them and stuff like that but at the end i think a special um level seven is really really hard balanced is there any change in the future or what's going on there alexander it's your question yes I'll answer in Russian, I think. Um, okay, I'm in. Я согласен, что этот левел немного разбалансирован. Давай по кусочкам по чуть-чуть, потому что сложно будет. So, Alexander says that he agrees that tier 7 is a bit out of balance comparing to other tiers. That's what we agree upon. Uh, uh, я даже знаю пару танков, которые мне очень хотелось бы забалансировать uh, со всеми остальными. Uh, There are a couple tanks that Alexander personally wants to, let's put it directly, nerf a bit, but... Uh, но как только я поправлю того же уничтожителя, я думаю, вы первые скажете, что я понерфил прям танк. But as soon as we do it, uh, we suppose that you guys will be the first to tell that. Come on, guys, you're nerfing premium tanks. <laughs> Ruby's not agreed. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Да, ну и все-таки не хотелось бы создавать такого прецедента. Но мы думаем. Мы думаем, и решения пока четкого нет. Мы, мы пытаемся найти другие способы уменьшить влияние этих танков на бой. So to put it maybe a bit more direct than Alexander said, but we do see the problem with these two tanks, and we are looking for solutions that are that are not as direct as just nerfing them. But we see it and we are working on it. And yeah, we'll see how it works okay. out. Yeah, and I would add that um, um, these two tanks were a great example for us. 
uh, was a great lesson for us. So uh, thank you for your feedback when we were listening to these things. No, I'm, I'm fine with it. And I know it's hard and I know uh, there are some, uh, Rip, some regulations. Do you have these things? Uh, I have them both, okay, but I never played them because I'm a person, if I say they are not nerfed, I'm not the guy who played them on the same time. Okay, but you don't judge these things without even trying them. No, 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 no. That's not right. I, um, I have 30 battles on the Smasher for videos, for testing okay. them, mm -hmm. and that's done. Okay. I see. So thank um, you. I, I think I think that I'm an experienced player after 50k battles that I also can't judge a tank without driving it by myself. I just have to go and blitz stars oh, and check course. the stats from an average player, and that's done. So you know. <laughs> of course. So uh, Alexander, we have something to add, right? How do you know that the player is an average? Um, because if you take the statistics, you have players from 55 percent to 65. That means that you have them on a nearly level. You but can watch. they could be not favorite players. They could be very skilled players. Yeah. You can watch how many players are playing them. If a tank is playing a lot, there are two reasons. It's funny or it's really strong. Uh, yeah. I, was, I wasn't... Uh, uh, it wasn't coming about the Smasher or about the Destroyer, but in general, when you see the statistics of a tank on some resource, uh, you can't say that it's an average statistic on a tank. It's uh, statistics of certain group of players, which were in, in sometimes, in some cases, this group is very different to the average, real average player uh, of a World of Tank place. I understand what you mean, but you have a seven tier tank that's played on the same damage level, like a tier nine or tier 10, there has to be something wrong with it. So uh, that's what uh, Alexander was talking about. So I think that uh, we have already answered uh, the questions that we acknowledge the problem and we are thinking about the solution. Thank right. you a lot. Yeah, thank you. But uh, Alexander, now you have option when you want to nerf it, this chance you can just say, oh, it's Reap says it's not I'm problem. okay with it. I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> Support from our okay. I'm safe yeah, in Switzerland. It's okay. At least one influencer will be okay and won't for this topic in his video. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, thank you, Rip, one more time for a question mm -hmm. and for your fair opinion. Uh, Amanet, let's go with you. Um, well, my question actually uh, connects to the one from Rip, aside from Smasher and Annihilator, obviously very not balanced. Um, there are some really old tanks in the game that haven't been touched for years. For and example? then you get the Tiger 2 that has been buffed and nerfed and is now getting buffed again. Uh, it would be nice, like I like what they're doing with the AMX now, it's getting some love. But if that would happen in other tanks as well, and not just tier 10, because I know that Wargaming changes the meta in tier 10 every now and again to make people do different things and everything. And it would just be nice to see that's happening in other tiers as well. Alexander. Uh, I'm ready to answer. Maybe Alexander would add something. So uh, a couple of days ago, uh, we introduced a new approach of balancing tanks. Uh, so it was a really long wall of text. I hope, guys, you, that you went through it and uh, got it. But still, um, uh, there are a lot of tanks that we haven't touched for a while. And that new approach is kind of a universal one, and it allows us to um, to buff or nerf any tank, uh, no matter how old or new the tank is. So it's kind of system approach that we want to put. Um, we want to put certain tanks according to their gameplay roles in certain limits, and as soon as we do that for tier seven, tier eight tier 9 and 10, uh, they will be more um, effective, more accurate adjustments when they are needed. Okay. So uh, this approach, I think, covers lots of tanks that uh, might be uh, left away from any loss from us. Yeah, thank you. So guys, only 30 minutes left. Let's... Um proceed a little bit faster uh every your question try to make it short um it's been more recent topics and it 
basically just happened. But I wanted to know um, for the maybe the reason as to uh, why the very first rating camo got put in the shop. Because since it's been um, moved away, it has gotten very rare. Not a lot of people had it, and it was pretty hard to get because it was out before they made the rating changes, more or less. And I heard, so I think they're even putting in the second one now as well. And I was curious as to why rarity is being removed from camos that had an actual accomplishment behind them. And now they're just a paywall. Okay, so... Um, Hello, guys. Uh, it was my idea. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I use Russian. Please turn on uh, your camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm not ready for this. Я, наверное, по-русски, чтобы было быстрее. Okay, I'll go with translation. Спасибо. Слишком много текста пожалуйста. Окей. Мы очень долго сомневались, добавлять ли этот первый рейтинговый камуфляж в награды. So we had a lot of discussion and doubts uh, on whether to put those camo like on, the, on sale or not. No, мы решили все-таки это сделать, потому что мы не хотим, чтобы в игре был контент, который абсолютно когда-то давно там был получен и не использовался. У меня будут там еще примеры такие. So, uh, but our main point is to make reuse of some old content that was like uh, the players were able to get on the like once and basically don't want to keep it like this so we uh, what Stratik is mentioning that we want to make a reuse of content and to make sure like uh, certain content was not only like years ago was available and that's it so that's why we put it to reuse and now she'll uh -huh. like tell us a couple examples Uh, если помните, был такой камуфляж когда-то на первом или на втором твистере, когда uh, камуфляж получала только одна команда, за которую проголосуют uh, все их фанаты. Даже не важно, выиграет она или нет. В общем, этот камуфляж имел чуть ли не там семь человек на сервере. Вот такой у Фетнеса был точно. Такой с uh, красно-синими, если вы помните, полосками. Да, был такой. И мы решили, тем не менее, его вернуть и снова наградить там часть игроков этим камуфляжем, там, несмотря на то, что он был очень редкий, потому что не должно быть контента, который совсем не используется. Антон, коротко. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was a long, the long one. Uh, so, uh, Turtic puts, uh, I think it was the first or second twister as an example. So, we had the camera that was... Uh, gifted to the team that get that got a lot the most votes i think uh, fatness was on the team i'm not sure that was tortic was uh, what tortic mentioned so uh, so basically at that moment only like seven people got that camo and like several years later we still decided to make it available again because it's let's say it's our approach so that there is no content that it's like so exclusive that like only you can get it only once only like seven years ago and that's it so that's why we're putting it for reuse yeah um, my uh, quick comment maybe секундочку it's... одну секундочку okay. братишка sorry uh, последняя мысль uh, мы добавили его в наборы только тем игрока то есть его могут получить только те игроки которые заслужили платины uh, и это и было так условием всегда uh, как можно было получить этот камуфляж это первый момент, и второй, как же он офигенно смотрится сейчас на PBR танках, это просто было бы кощунством не добавить его сейчас, потому что на PBR технике этот камуфляж смотрится просто фантастически. So, thank you guys, sorry for Подожди, my Russian. Подожди, этот доступен только тем, у кого платина за бабки? А, ну, там так баланс настроен наборов за монеты, что ты можешь купить его только если ты достиг платины. Ну, или если у тебя есть много сезонных монет, но ты все равно тогда про игрок, условно. Окей, просто, извините, я просто хотел разобраться для себя, потому что это было что-то новое для меня. Кощунство на английский не забудь перевести, я послушаю. Ну, про джоки в русском, пожалуйста, и давайте... 
Uh, so, uh, and so latest last point for Turtic was that uh, though this camo is on sale, it's only available for like players with from highest leagues. So it's it's for sale in like season coins and it's like pretty expensive. And unless you're a pretty decent player with certain level, uh, you can't get it. So, so yeah, yeah. And <laughs> quick note from my side for sure. We don't want to sell these rare, uh, rare camas direct. Um, we understand that it's, it's rare camera about skill, about some tournaments. And if you, if we will have this camo in our rotation, it uh, will be uh, some rewards for your skill, not like for your mind. No. So would that then therefore mean that um, when we got them um, like one or two years ago, it was more of an early access to use and now it's just being used again so that new people have the chance of getting it. And if that's the case, would that mean that in some time in the future, the i6 Fearless is going to appear in a similar fashion? Yeah, why not? It can be like a reward for some, I don't know, events when you which will skill based or something like this. You know, our Fearless uh, E6, yep, it's a great example because it was really rare tank and like only maybe 100 people uh, had it uh, like years. But after that, we added uh, him in our rating battles, and it was a great reward for our community. And we didn't have like some, oh, it's a shame because it's only for 100 people. Something yeah, like uh, that. Uh, sorry, they are interrupting you. I think that the answer is uh, uh, well taken. Uh, Alexander, I see you raised hand, but before um, you speak, um, Guys, um, bloggers, content creators, influencers, and um, community contributors, of course. <laughs> uh, let's make um, a blitz Q&A. So please pick one question you'd like to ask and um, make sure that the answer to this question will be like yes, no, and some details. So you'll have like about one minute for this question and answer, okay? Uh, so, Alex, yes. Yeah, uh, thank you, Alexandra. So, uh, just a quick note uh, from Tortic uh, uh, that uh, uh, this camo uh, that we put uh, uh, in the event, uh, you can get uh, only... Uh, so, the game design was balanced uh, uh, in, th in such way that you can get this uh, only if you uh in platina or something and uh before you could uh, get this camo uh too if you uh, were only in platina so uh it means that uh, we don't want to give this <clears throat> this type of content for uh every player right but uh if you if you are a skilled player uh, so uh, and you didn't have a chance uh, to get this camo uh, before uh, and uh, you are platinum now so why not yeah maybe thank you, you yeah 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 thank you thank you alexander for your remark so uh guys please q and a just 20 minutes left so who is ready to ask fast yeah. and curious question rip of course we have on the European YouTube community, we have a lot of problems with leaks from uh, other YouTubers. Are right. you working on that and do you have any solution? Because on the moment, if you are CC or NDA, um, you're not allowed to do very important stuff for YouTube. Are you working on that and is there any solution? Yep. So I think Insider will cover uh, the topic about leaks. Insider, yes. Uh yeah, just could you repeat, please? Yes. Um, we have on the YouTube community, there is a need to put news on an early time. 
but yeah. we have a lot of problems from different YouTubers who are leaking every stuff before Wargaming is doing it. For uh, us as community contributors, it's not a good situation. Is there any solution? Um, and are you? Uh, I see. I see. So th that's probably for Tony, not for me. Then just. Uh, uh, the, that's that, the NDA policy. That's. I feel. I thought that you can just explain a little bit about leaks. So, uh, how how is it possible? Just. Oh. To so find probably. Uh, yeah, about technical part of leaks. Uh, so. Uh, so you just want you want me guys to explain how information is gets so leaked. I can answer the second part of the question. Uh, yeah. So there are some ways to get the content from when it's a, when the game resources are uploaded to our CDN services mm -hmm. if prior to the release yeah so to be available for Android client for especially Chinese one so th the data can be just exposed and uh, <clears throat> some guys can actually leak those data and d data mine and open up the resources to the game files. Uh, so the solutions uh, are possible here, but uh, they would require, uh, for example, eliminating game modifications, like mo modifications that users install and some, some that are not bad, that are not restricted, yeah. some like sounds, like radicals, like all this, things yeah so uh all those uh steps would require ciphering some kind of you know uh to just covering up everything or just packing it to i don't i don't know it's just cipher uh zip files or something or just uh so yeah that would be that that's possible but that's kind of costly and that would require uh big changes to how our game resources mm -hmm. are used by the game and by the game client and that would absolutely just finish up those game modifications and while we are not uh just uh we actually are kind of against those game modifications because because they can cause instabilities for the players and so on but uh if they do nothing wrong about the game, yeah. So not try to cheating or something. So uh, okay, if somebody likes new sounds, other sounds, other radicals, that would be okay. So for now, we are trying to keep that possibility. Okay. So Thank that's you, Andrew. So let's proceed to the second part of the question. Tony, please. Yeah. Uh, so I think second part is more about uh, how we operate in such stuff. Because I think uh, uh, in last year, the situation, it's still far from perfect, but it became better. I think you cannot beat that. So, yeah. uh, mm, as you know, like we, each month we make, a, not, not each month, but uh, regarding like most uh, interesting updates, most interesting like uh, content additions, uh, we make those official leaks and we share them with you guys. And we usually add some details so you can like elaborate more on it. I know it's not perfect because usually we share it like uh, in the best uh, world, it's like a day prior or usually it's like a couple hours before. But uh, it's not because like we are bad guys and we don't want to share content with you. It's just because of the workflow, because uh, what we share with you is something that will go into the game like in two weeks. And this means that uh, this video, uh, it uh, started to be created like two weeks earlier, which gives us like a whole month. And a full month before release, uh, not all the features that we want to show, that we want to show are there in the build so we can like capture them, use it for our video and use it for something that we share with you. So yeah, we're trying to make it like real fast, as fast as we can, as fast as features are, are delivered into the build and video team is able to capture it. But it's always like uh, done in the last moment. And as soon as I get it, I share it with you guys. Uh, if we could do it earlier, sometimes like we can do it like a day prior, if it like uh, everything works out perfectly, we do it like a bit earlier. But sometimes, yeah, it's, it's still a space for improvement, 
but uh, for now it's like it is what it is tony you you, you will pay for extra minutes oh, sorry <laughs> so, just a couple two words that are real quick not tech things but uh we're going in future to take uh measures legally against the violators some more serious stuff about that in the future thank you a lot thank you uh jack short question right i'll, I'll make it really short so um are we expecting Wargaming to increase um, any price pool in the future for tournaments and also maybe in-game special prices okay. next year? So tournament price pool, Dmitry, can you answer the question, please? I guess a reverse stripe didn't answer better. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll take it. So uh, we believe that increasing uh, the price pool for any tournament, no matter what, are we talking about quick tournament or even Blitz Tuesday Cup uh, or Blitz Cup, uh, it's not about the prices. So uh, there is no direct connection between the price pool and the interest that uh, such tournaments can, uh, can cause. So we really think about making our tournaments uh, more interesting, more amazing, more spectacular, but not with such uh, simple and not every way, uh, always right decision, like just increasing the price pools. Thank you, Variable Stripe. Let's go. Uh, Hasamat, you all. Please question. Uh, as Rubel's personal unofficial secretary for test program, um, I, I have a question concerning it. Are you thinking... I, didn't, I didn't give you that title. <laughs> um, I have thought about uh, testing. So, if there is a new tech tree line, testing more than the tier X tank. So, test perhaps for tier eight and uh, nine tank too. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, so, uh, we give you guys uh, those tanks that we really need to be tested on on our uh, live server, because if we um, if we add more tanks uh, to the test program, it will really uh, extend our production production cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, because the, if we release a tank on live server to be tested, it has to be uh, completely ready for being released, just like uh, in, in next update. Uh, this is why we have super test external, internal one, uh, where we don't need to follow those, uh, obey those requirements. And uh, so if we will test a new tech line and give you tier 7, tier 8, tier 9, uh, among with tier 10, uh, it will cause uh, that we will release one or maybe two lines per year, not two or three. Mm. But, but you see also that in most cases, uh, mainly the tier 9 tank is a little bit too strong. <laughs> the last times, <laughs> uh, th those are issues we uh, are ready to deal with if okay. we need. So that's this question section. No extra questions. <laughs> Sorry, Hasamad. <laughs> Just so few time left. Future, do you uh, this question, please? Uh, Future, we can also. Yeah, hear you. yeah. Really simple one. Sorry. <laughs> Um, it's like this. There's a lot of interest when you, the wargaming staff, and us, the content creators, get together and do little events, like little tournaments and stuff, and do them on a live stream. Are you going to do more of them? And if so, when? Tony. Mm, sure. Like, short answer is yes. So... I think it like can be multiple activities, including like even some of us like uh, from community team or for dev team coming to your streams, like chatting, coffee chat at Fugit's uh, channel, for example. So yeah, it can be an option, obviously. Uh, here, feel free to be proactive in here. So if you have some ideas or you're, you want to invite someone to a stream or to activity, just go ahead. We can yeah. do it, no problem. I know that Raman wants to join your live streams so very much, so feel free to make <laughs> oh, yeah. a request. 
if we had some tournaments uh, like bloggers uh, versus uh, dev team, uh, I'll find uh, Royal Fatness on the battleground. No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that will be the last thing you'll see on the battlefield, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. So, uh, Alex, you have something to say? Something yeah, urgent? yeah. I just wanted to say that. Uh, uh, guys, please uh, make sure that uh, you're choosing the r right uh, time because right now we have uh, uh, we're planning our Blitz Cup uh, tournaments, and uh, I think uh, most of the participants will be uh, super busy with this. Uh, yeah, I think we're talking about yeah. after November. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Fatness. Let's move on, yeah. Yeah, fatness face like blitz cup. What? What kind of blitz cup? Uh, Frostbite, your question, please. Uh, yes. So I have a very simple question as well. Uh, there's a feature on PC known as the anonymizer, which uh, enables yep. players to hide their username when in battle. Uh, is it? Is there a plan for that in Blitz? And if so, when would that be yeah, imp implemented? Yeah, uh, Alexander is ready to answer this question. Um, this is the, the question from from year to year. Yes, we have this idea and we want to add this uh, opportunity, but we don't know when. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll keep you posted, of course, but uh, we're working on this idea. Uh, Fatness, your please question, please. Hello there. Um, so pretty simple question. Are you guys going to be working on kind of new physics features such as the handbrake? Now, I, I'm sorry to compare you guys to what PC. I know you don't like it, but on what PC there is a handbrake feature which, which makes maneuvering fast vehicles a little bit easier. Um, and that would be very convenient on what blitz for something like a batcha, especially since you can't control your ability to drift or turn in certain scenarios. Uh, so is Wargaming planning on working on new physics features such as the handbrake? Uh, yeah, we'll answer yeah. right. Yeah, let's try. Uh, you know, our tech team, our rangers team always try to add something interesting for our game. If we speak about uh, physics, if we speak about graphics, uh, but our like main wall is uh, perfor device performance. Uh, we have like lots of experiments, lots of stuff inside, but uh, sometimes we need to stop develop it because uh, uh, you know, like only ten percent of devices want to have it because it's performance stuff. Uh, for sure, uh, we uh, want to try add some new stuff if we speak about physics, uh, but you know. Uh, we can say you, yeah, that's it. What's the next stuff? It will be uh, your direction, but maybe something new. But we try to uh, like improve our physics as well for sure. And Vladimir has something. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, fatness means not mm, mostly not about the physics, maybe about some additional feature exactly in this moment. Yeah, uh, the main thing here is a game design and game design uh, questions because uh, if you're playing on PC, it's okay to adjust new button. It's uh, not a big deal. But if we are talking about uh, some touch devices, I think you understand already understand uh, uh, the answer. Uh, I think that uh, you shouldn't wait this function really soon because um, it's about adding a new control. And for our game, new control, um, it's a big deal, actually. For mm -hmm. you, of course, it's OK. You want to get as much control as you, as, as you can, uh, um, as possible. Yeah, and it, it will be OK for you. But for newcomers, for regular players, it will be harder to deal with all this stuff, To harder to uh, control all this stuff and uh, we actually trying to simplify our control as much as possible and all new functions like this they are made controlling a bit uh, trickier so uh, then uh, that's why i think the answer is no right now but maybe maybe it's possible that something change in future because in general all ga gamers community becomes more 
educated, I mean, uh, educated uh, in the meaning of uh, playing games. They play in shooters more and more on these devices. And that's why there's um, abilities somehow raises uh, during the time. So maybe uh, in some, I don't know, in a year or in a two years in the future, we will decide that it's okay to add, uh, to add new control and this will be, yeah. Thank you very much. So, oh, yes, uh, Ilya is a little bit disappointed because uh, he misunderstood your question, but I think that he also covered one, one part of your question about physics. So, Ilya, do not worry, everything is okay. <laughs> so, um, Avery, please, your question. Sure, um, a short one as well. Uh, are we going to be able to exclude maps from uh, random ma uh, matches to maybe just exclude one map from the rotation? So that we ju just don't have to play it. For example, I want to ban Castilla so that when I have that on, I don't get it in my matches. But uh, if I want to change it, I would need to wait a certain amount of time so that I can't just hop between those. Yeah, I understand the ban of uh, one certain map. So, Alexander, can you answer this question? Uh, at, this, at this time, we don't have, uh, we don't think that this is uh, uh, best idea or good idea. We have uh, a lot of discussion about it, and uh, in short term, no. Yep. Thank you, Drudels. Right, thank you, Drudels, please. All right. So. One question I have has to do with the super speed boost slash consumables in the game. So basically, I held a poll on my channel and asked how people thought about the consumables. And out of about 12,000 people, 80% of people said they'd rather have vehicles like the T125, Kranvong, and the fe 25 b instead of being nerfed around the consumables, just to have them removed and then have the tanks either brought back to their original states before they had them. Is that possible instead of just nerfing the tanks around the consumables and provisions they may have? Roman. Uh, so actually, it, uh, it's a question about balance. So they're checking data, data about uh, how balanced tan tanks uh, on the levels. So the answer, uh, if the balance team finds that the better to uh, nerf some tanks, we decide to nerf some tanks. If uh, we decide to nerf some uh, consumables, we nerf some consumables, of course. So uh, that's why we don't give some consumables on some tanks or some trees. So the answer is that they are data-driven <laughs> methods to balance these tanks. Okay. So uh, and the, the the so the reason why also. Uh, the consumables is uh, is the short duration uh, characteristics uh, booster, and the tanks is like the permanent. So that's why sometimes it's better to uh, nerf the tank. Yeah, uh, Alexander, you you wanted something. Uh, I I just want to say that uh, we want to add uh, tanks opportunity to. Uh, increase the um, uh, gameplay during the battle and uh, we cannot do it only with uh, tank params and we need some uh, consumables here like uh, like abilities uh, for short, short for some period uh, and uh, this is uh, why we add uh, consumables for tanks and we'll spread this uh, um, idea idea in future and uh, but we will need balance for tanks so we sometimes will change the uh, the power of consumables and the power of tanks also yeah thank you and i'm on it mine is simply yes or no we have avatars profile backgrounds camouflages will we at some point be able to get garage uh, customizations like that you can get the Christmas garage to put in your garage whenever. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah not in the near future, but because, uh, you know, we have some restriction about uh, build size. If we speak about to have lots of garages in our build now, but we want to fix it and we want to have garage customization and we work with Roman, with the staff, and maybe you can... Uh, uh, 
show showed some slots in our uh, garage when we have Oliver Tree event with this all this Oliver stuff. It's uh, maybe in the future and. Uh, will be like a part of uh, garage customization or something like this. We are working in uh, this way, for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ilya. So guys, uh, three hours um, are over. Uh, I see that you have uh, asked 30 questions and I'm talking only about full questions without the small extra additions. And it's a great result. And now I want to make... Um, Make a surprise maybe for our devs, but devs, maybe you have questions to our bloggers. <laughs> That's unexpected. Uh, you want to go? Do you want to go sleep? <laughs> That's your only question. <laughs> where, where's my t-shirt? Thank you, Alexandra. I know <laughs> where we're going with this. That was uh, only for you. Thank you. Uh, maybe maybe it because uh, uh, I understand that our dev team need for prepare for this activation too. Maybe we can organize some um, Google Doc or something when where our dev team can like uh, ask some questions. Right? Ask some questions for our CC, and after that, Anton shared it for your guys. Maybe okay. it will be like a uh, in, better way I for us. I see Insider has a question, so yeah, yeah. welcome. Yeah, thanks. Just a brief question. You know, guys, I was a big fan of uh, Nintendo Switch version and adding back the gamepads or controller support to the game. So do does any one of you use uh, a controller for playing Blitz or Nintendo Switch version? I can Nintendo say I now. tried a video mm -hmm. playing on controller and I probably would have done better blindfolded. <laughs> it was it was pretty bad. Um, and I, I tried on the Switch as well. The issue is when you slightly tap the stick, it just keeps turning the camera. So that, that would be my biggest issue. Ah, so did you try that prior to our adding the sensitivity settings? Um, I tried it about, I'd say, a month ago. So... Mm -hmm. So probably um, uh, that's the most recent version. Mm, strange enough. Thank I you. An Alex Asus ROG2, I tried it too, and it was like hard to say because the sensitivity you have, will, it's hard to have the same sensitivity like if you're playing on touch. Mm. So I yeah. give it away again. That's fair enough. Yeah. So yeah. Alexander, your question, please. Fair question. Uh, uh, do you like our new tutorial? Oh yeah, no, yeah. The new tutorial I think is way better than the old one. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely much better. It's definitely an improvement for sure. I it's, think it's definitely good, better. Yeah. I think it could still be improved further. Like at Drankfest, we see we've seen these little videos about side scraping and whatnot. Stuff like that would be very useful in Blitz as well. Like if you uh, or like how uh, World of War ship splits does it. Like if you buy a tank type or some ore tier that you've never had before, mm -hmm. you get this little video that shows you what what the tank is all about, so to speak. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because the tutorial itself is good for getting players started. You obviously don't want to overwhelm them with information such as penetration, dip, how different ammunition types work, where to go haul down, all that stuff. You don't want to overwhelm them, but having a progressive learning system for players i think would be helpful just to teach them as they progress up the tiers they start getting more experience they need to acquire new skills and i'm not sure how you do that but something along those lines but the current tutorial for getting players started off is really quite good now thank you uh elia mm -hmm. do you have a question yeah it's not my question but it's a question from our monetization team <laughs> uh, we have guys, such? Maybe, yeah yeah maybe guys you have some opinion uh, about our new shop is it understandable is it works well uh, do you understand all these bullets and our uh, premium shop maybe some opinion from your side Yes, but it glitches sometimes and then everything is marked as unread again and you have to scroll through everything again to get the notifications gone. 
Yeah, we know the issue. Yeah. I've, uh, I've talked uh, with our monetization team today maybe, about this, so we'll check it. So maybe just implement a, a check feature, check all marked as red or something yeah. similar yeah. to like news notifications. <laughs> that way you don't have to scroll through everything. Even for, like for avatars yeah. too, please. Honestly, yeah. and add storage, storage <laughs> as well. Like for certificates, too, demos, all notifications, all that stuff. The game as oh, well, yeah. right? I want this feature too, good. <laughs> Drudels, yes. Yeah, there's um in the premium shop. You guys have added like little time slider things for like the camo crates. It'll say like buy them for shards or whatever, and then like five seconds later, it'll pop up a gold bundle over it, and then it'll go back and forth. It's pretty confusing. I mean, I was trying to buy um, some camo crates just to put them on my new tanks, and I had the kit waiting for it to go back to the gold one on that little timer. Uh, so that's something I'd say just leave them as like separate bundles, so it's much easier just to navigate. It means the one in, in the garage or in the um, shop? When you go into the premium shop, there's like bundles, and they'll like change depending after like three or four seconds. We have a little slider that goes, and then it'll change the bundle per- thing. I mean, um, it's Whenever I'm like trying to on a video or something talk about a tank, it'll like disappear and I'm like, where'd it go? I think uh, because I've talked about this as well, is maybe have it so that you can choose which one is to be a default. And also, maybe one thing about those is that you can choose how many of them you want to buy mm-hmm. or just select it, um, the maximum that you can buy. Because, for example, what Drew said with these containers, um, I tried to buy a couple as well. I bought one and then it switched to gold and then I had to wait for it to switch back and I had to do that five times. And it's quite time consuming if you do it often. Um, so that might be an, a thing as well. And one more feedback that I actually got from some clan members is that it looks a bit messy in a way because... Um, now what you can pay for with real money and what you can pay for with gold is all over the place or with season coins so maybe making it possible to filter uh, could be an opportunity if that's not too much work of course i think that i can make a little spoiler for uh, the esport event uh, we will add an extra tab so all these season coins bundles and esports uh, bundles, containers, etc., they will be separated from the other containers, tanks, gold so bundles, whatever. So uh, Ilya, are you satisfied with the uh, new shop feedback? Right. So I think that uh, it's high time to say. Big thanks to the mm-hmm. development team, first of all, because guys, it's, it's the end of the hard week and it's the third day we have summit. Uh, the previous two days were in Russian. And yeah, thank you so much for spending a lot of your time and it's Friday evening. So thank you so much. And I think that um, it's very good uh, experience for us to make such Q&A sessions <laughs> with bloggers with our influencers and community contributors and content creators, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll do our best, guys, to make such sessions uh, as often as it possible for us. So thank you for joining our summit today. You're the best. We respect <laughs> all your feedback and we, we hear you. And uh, go on, do your content uh, you deserve all the best. We'll see some of you really soon on our Blitz Cups. So stay healthy, wear masks, wash your hands, and play Blitz. And we'll yes, be sharing you, all the materials next week, probably Tuesday or early Wednesday. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thanks a lot. That right. was so <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> if, if you have any feedback about this summit, please do not hesitate to send it to Tony and we'll discuss, make some um yes, there's always room from fixes. Problems. So yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Love you. Bye bye. Nice weekend. Bye. 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 Guys. bye. Well, there you have it. That is now all the footage from the summit. I know they're long videos. Hopefully you got something out of that but um, what i'm going to do i'm going to do a separate video it'll be later in the week not with the summit but just some of the salient points to discuss anyway be interested to hear your thoughts on this by all means comment and everything below and until the next time guys stay safe out there have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about having fun and being happy